Hi everyone, welcome to the second video of the Lightweight Java Game Library 3 tutorial video series. Quite a mouthful. And in this installment, I'm going to have a look at the display and how that's handled in the new version of LWJGL. Now before I get into the code, I'd like to show you something. Uh, you can find all the code for all my tutorials on uh, my GitHub repository. There's a link in the description. Uh, so let's say you want to learn about uh, modern OpenGL in LWJGL3. So you can click on this code. And uh, yeah, you have it here. And uh, yeah, so I have that same, those same files I have in this IntelliJ project. And in this video, I'm going to look at the display, which is the second part, as you can see. And the code for that is here. But I'm going to write it uh, as we go. So let's start with the LWJGL display. Now the, the main thing that's changed, if you compare it to LWJGL2, is that the new version of OpenGL uses GLFW. So what's GLFW, you ask? Well, that's a, a cross-platform windowing library for OpenGL. And the reason that they um, now use GLFW and no longer use the display class is, um, is because the new library is, is more, um, has more features, right? So you can have like multiple windows or multiple threads as opposed to one window or one thread. So let's start our display video by creating a, a main method. And in this main method, the first thing that we're going to do is add error handling code. So that's a neat feature of the new LWJGL code. You can now have so-called error callbacks so that if something goes wrong in the code, you will immediately get a, a meaningful description Whereas in earlier versions of LWJGL, you'd get like a, a program that cr that had like crashed and uh, and you'd have to debug it yourself. But now that's done for you, so that's nice. And the way we do this is we create a private static oops, private static GLFW error callback. And also for later on, we'll just create a private static long called window ID. So what do we do with the error callback? So what the error callback is, is a sort of container for um, what GLF, GLFW is to do if something goes wrong, if, a, if there's an error essentially. So what I'll do is I'll say error callback is callbacks dot error callback print and then system dot error so it's a, a standard callback from the callbacks class and this yields um, a callback that prints the error to this input stream so in other words it prints the error to the system error output stream which is just what you have here or if you run the program in a command uh, prompt or in terminal then you'd see like the errors in that window so so much for uh, setting the uh, error callback now the last thing we need to do is say glfw uh, we need to statically import that first so import static or dot lwjgl dot glfw dot glfw dot asterisk semicolon this imports all the methods from glfw.java. Okay, so glfw.set error callback, error callback. Right, so that assigns this error callback to glfw. And you'll notice uh, if you've um, if you have a prior experience with lwjgl that glfw is really really similar to OpenGL, and that's because it follows the same. Uh, you, well, you could say the same uh, syntax, right? Because um, it's it's uh, modeled after the same principle of global state and then also every method starts with this glfw prefix so that's how you can recognize whether a method has something to do with glfw okay so that's the first step the first step is error handling the second step is to initialize glfw 
and we do this with the glfw init method. So glfw init. But actually, if you look at the return type of glfw, then that's an integer. And see, it returns gl true if successful and gl false if an error occurred. So if we add a variable like a int glfw result and uh, we assign the result of GL, glfw in it to result and then we compare that result to uh, gl true and gl false then we know whether the initialization was successful. So let's say if, if there was something wrong with your computer monitor and the program didn't work then you get an error here and um, you'd be able to take appropriate action. So one more thing we need to do here is add a static import for OpenGL. Okay, so we'll compare glfw result with gl false. If the result is false, then the initialization failed. And in that case, we can throw a new illegal state exception because we're in a state that really uh, shouldn't exist. So gl init failed. Ah, level one dev is now following me. That's a shout out to you, uh, level one dev on Twitter. <laughs> Okay, so we have our uh, our GLFW thing set up, and we've got that going for us, but we still don't have anything that's even remotely similar to what we really want, which is a window, because um, to create a window, we need to do something else. We need to do window ID is GLFW create window. Now we have a host of different parameters. I'm just going to walk you through every one of them. So the first parameter is the width of the window, 640 pixels uh, in our case. You can change this to whatever you want, but keep in mind, if you change it to like a million pixels, then um, it, it won't actually like uh, stretch your screen or anything. It, it will cap the value. So if you have like a 2000 um, on a monitor that's only 1080p, then it won't actually create a window with that with those dimensions. Okay, so we have width, height, title, display thing, and the last two parameters are uh, monitor ID and um, window to share resources with respectively. And those are both things that you don't really need to worry about. Uh, if, uh, if if you're not doing really advanced programming. Let's say if you have multiple monitors, then you could use the monitor ID for like a full screen uh, application. And if you have multiple windows, then you can use uh, the, that last parameter, which is the window to share resources with. So monitor and share. But I'll set them both to null, which isn't actually null as you have a, a like a null in object terms. But you need to do memory util dot null for that to work. So we'll do that twice. Memory util dot null. Okay, great. We have a window, but it, there is also a possibility that the window that we just created wasn't corrected, uh, wasn't created properly, like uh, like like this here, only for the window. And the way we check that is we compare the window ID to, to null. Because if it's null, then we know that something went wrong along the line. And again, we can throw an illegal state exception because the window failed. OK, great. Now, unfortunately, we're not uh, quite done. It's about, uh, let's see. 40%, 40% of the way. Um, so glfw make context current is the next line that we're going to uh, to add to our code. And what this does is it links the OpenGL context of the window to the current thread. Okay, so what does this mean? 
um, there is a so-called OpenGL context. And you can see this as the environment that OpenGL is operating in. Uh, but then the window also has a context. And, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, not the window, but the, the, the thread also has a context. So like in Java, you have different threads, which are like different streams of processes. And what we want to do is link the OpenGL context of the window to the current thread. I know it sounds confusing, but you, really what you just need to do is write this line and then uh, you don't need to worry about this because it's only really important if you want to do multitasking and stuff like that. Now this next line is, is really important in terms of display because this determines our frame rate refresh rate. So you know like in an application, if it's a, um, or in a game, you have a so-called frame rate. And for Xbox, that's usually caps at uh, 60 frames per second. But for some PC games like Battlefield, uh, you could have frame rates of over 100, uh, 100 FPS if your uh, computer is really good. But what we want to do in our programs is cap the frame rate to 60 frames per second because that's the highest number of frames that uh, you as a human can perceive and also that your monitor can display. And we do this by setting the swap interval to one. Uh, now there is a technical term for this, it's called vertical synchronization. Um, but it, yeah, again, that's something that's uh, only really interesting if you really want to get into the details of the display. Now the last uh, method call for the window initialization code is going to be window ID show window. Okay, so show window window ID. Speaks for itself, doesn't it? Now um, it's time to actually link what we have in GLFW to OpenGL, and the way we do that is say GL context dot create from current. If you don't add this line, you'll get a, an illegal state exception. And it, it, it will say that there is no OpenGL context current in the current thread. Right, so um, over here, we link the GLFW context. Over here, we link the OpenGL context. And now, um, so when you're programming graphics applications, most of them fall um, into three parts, right? Most of them are composed of three parts. The first part is the initialization part where the things are set up and you know the window is created and the resources are loaded from files and whatnot. And then the second part, that's uh, the, the real main part, that's the so-called update loop. So this is when you loop through the program and you just sort of check all the inputs and um, check whether the user has pressed, uh, for example, the exit button and basically just refresh the program. So this is the main loop. And then after that, you have the, uh, the shutdown part. So this is where you get rid of the resources that were used in the application and you close all the streams and uh, basically you just uh, prepare the program for shutdown. So right now, like this was like the first part, the um, initialization part. And then right now we're going to enter the, the update loop. And we do this using a while statement and we'll say while glf w window should close, window ID is false. So in other words, as long as the window should not close, keep running this. Think about that for a second. As long as the window should not close, keep updating. So we can turn this around and say, if the, win if the window should be closed, then exit the loop. So that's how this uh, logic works. And this is the, the integral uh, part of the update loop. Now for some uh, some brief OpenGL. I won't really go into depth, uh, but you have this GL clear GL color buffer bit method. This basically clears the contents of the window. Then we have GLFW swap buffers. And this is a very, very important method because what this method does is it swaps the uh, the front and back frame buffers, meaning 
in, the, in layman's terms that you update the contents of the display. So if you don't do this, then you won't actually see any new graphics on your display. Now the last part is uh, GLFW pull events. Sorry, um, so GLFW pull events, what that does is it checks the mouse input and the keyboard input. Uh, now again, this is a really important method because if you don't add this method, then the program will become un unresponsive because you won't be able to drag the window around or even close it for that matter. So this is an important method uh, method call. Uh, now this is really already the gist of the main loop. Like of course, if you have a more uh, more intricate, more complicated program, then you'd see lots and lots of code in here and also in here you'd see more OpenGL uh, initialization code. Actually, I can show you that. So this is the code that I wrote for uh, for OpenGL. And you can see I separated the different phases into setup. Uh, what was it? Enter update loop and, uh, and shutdown. So this is all of the setup code. And then in the draw code, in this case, it's only one line. That's because of the uh, the way this uses modern OpenGL. It's not necessarily representative of uh, of the program. And then in cleanup, you have more things as well. So this is uh, you could say this is like the blueprint for an LWJGL application. Now, last step is to say GLFW destroy window window ID and GLFW terminate. Now let's see if that uh, runs. Yep, there you go. Um, actually, look, right now it's uh, it's black, which is a bit boring. Um, let's make the window green for uh, just for fun. The way you do that is you set the clear color to uh, zero comma one comma zero comma one. Um, I'll talk about this in the next video about rendering. Uh, but basically, this sets the color of the window to green. There you go. And on that note, I end this video. I thank you for watching uh, my video again. And I hope to see you in the next video about rendering.